What's up guys, this is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and today we are going to learn how to do client-side validations on a form. So that means while the user is typing in stuff, you are going to immediately tell them if they're typing in good stuff or bad stuff. So if the form is entered in valid or invalid. And the reason you want to do that is because one of the things I hate about websites is when you enter in a whole form, you click submit and then it tells you you did this one thing wrong. You fix that one thing and then you do everything else, you hit submit and then it says, no, nah, you did this one thing wrong. Instead of doing that, we're going to learn how to do these validations while the user is typing. So while they're typing stuff, we're immediately telling them, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, so that they know once they hit submit, they will know they have everything correctly. Trust me, your users will be a lot happier with you if you take the extra effort and you do client-side validations. So I have a little example of what we are going to learn in this tutorial, and I have a comment section on my um, website, and we are literally going to make something that is exactly the same. So if you see on my website, I have a comment field for every single video that I have. So no matter what video you go to, you see a comment section. And if a user wants to comment it to a video, they just click right here, respond to video. And when they click that, they see the comment um, form that I made. And they can click comment up here, and they also see that same form. So you'll see that there are three fields that we are validating for in this comment form. In the comment form that we make in these tutorials, we are going to do these three fields and we are also going to do a phone number field. I know that that's not very, uh, most websites usually don't have that. Some of them do. It matters what kind of form you want. But I also wanted to do something with digits so that you could see how that's done too. So you're going to learn how to do name, email, a comment section, and a phone number field. But let's just see how this works so that you can see if you actually want to do this tutorial. So you will see the first um, the first field is for name, and it asks for a first and last name, please. Meaning that if the user types in just their first name, this won't work. And as I said, it will tell them immediately. So let's just say that the person typed in Donna. It will immediately tell them first and last name, please. So that means that they have to do a space, and they have to start typing in their last name. So let's just say they typed in Carrington. And then you will see that it will say, Welcome Donna Carrington. So before, when it was invalid, it was red. And then once it's valid, it's green. So this is another really cool thing you can do for your users so that they will know I'm in the good or I'm in the bad. Then we're going to learn how to do an email comment field. So this will say that your email will not be publicly shared. So that can give a little reassurance to the user. So now what we are going to be validating in our email is that there are a certain amount of characters before the at sign just like every email address. Then we are going to validate that there is an at sign. Then we will validate that there is a little bit of characters after the at sign. Then we will validate that there is a decimal. And then we will validate that there is a com or a .org or .edu or something like that. So again, first we validate that there are a certain amount of characters before the at sign. So something like Donna.Carrington, something like that. And then we will validate that there is an at sign, so at. And you will see it's still invalid because they haven't done everything. So then we'll validate that there are a certain amount of characters after the at sign. So let's say Gmail. Then they will validate that there is a dot. And then we will validate that there is a um, a uh, .org or .com or .edu or something like that. So if you type in .com, gmail.com, now it works. But the second you take out .com, it's not working anymore. And what happens if it doesn't work? If they click submit comment, Form must be valid to submit. So everything has to be perfect in order for this thing to submit. I will teach you how to do that too. So if they do .com, it's still not good enough because now they have to do the comment field. So you might think we really don't need validations for the comment field. But what if you want to make sure the user isn't just typing in hi? And what if you want to make sure, what if you're putting this into a database and you need to make sure that the user doesn't type in 5,000 characters because you might just have a maximum length of 500 characters in your database. So you might want to validate how many characters the user is putting in. Well, it would be good to tell the user, hey, you can't type in this many, but you have to type in at least this many. So check this out. This is an example. Look at what's happening on the bottom of the screen. It's telling you that you're 12 more characters required. So if we get rid of characters, we need more characters. And if we put in characters, it says that the countdown is going down. So this is an example of a comment on my website. 
So basically what would happen is it will tell the user that this is a valid comment. Now let's say if they typed in 5,000 more characters. The second they would get to the 5,000th character, this would change to red and it would say, whoa, whoa, now you have too many comments and you have too many characters in here and it wouldn't let the user submit this. But as you can see, we have green here, we have green here, and we have green here. So this is a way to tell the user everything you have done is good. So Donna Carrington theoretically should be able to submit this form. So if you click submit now, boom, it went through. Oh, I clicked it twice, so that's why it said name is required. But as you can see, the form went through with Ajax. So if you close this, and if we look into my database, and I click browse, you will see at the bottom, Donna Carrington, Donna Carrington at gmail.com. This is an example of a comment. And if we come over here and we refresh the page, you will see Donna Carrington. This is an example of a comment on my website. And now the comments went up to four. So this is a lot of stuff that you won't be learning in this tutorial. But mainly the big thing that we are going to be learning in this tutorial is how to make validations while the user is typing. It is one of the most useful things you can do on your website because it will, it will be more interactive for the user. They will be able to immediately see what they are doing wrong. All right, so uh, I just made this quick demonstration to show you all what you will be learning in this tutorial. Hopefully this tutorial is something that you are interested in and uh, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching and uh, see you all in the next tutorial.